Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you into December. It is December. November is long behind us. Thanksgiving is long over. And now is the time to think about uh, Christmas stuff, perhaps, maybe. Or maybe we'll just want to wait until the last minute. I will. All right, so let's talk about some weather. It is cold and cold and cold outside. It is bitter cold with a high of 26 today and a low of 9. And speaking of 9, it is currently 9 degrees outside. Your high is going to be... Uh, pretty much in the 20s throughout the whole week. And then by Saturday, you're going to be uh, partly cloudy skies with your highs starting to uh, get a little warmer in the uh, 30s. So you can have that to look forward to. But other than that, it's going to be bitter cold. But I got a little uh, snow report for some people who want to go up on the slopes. And I uh, there's about three different um, places that have a good amount of snow in the last uh, 24, 72 hours, enough for um, snowing and skiing. This week is Big Sky Ski Resort, Bridger Bowl, and Red Lodge Mountain, um, all here in Montana. These are all, and you can find out more information by going to onthesnow.com. All right, so I'll be giving more snow reports as the the snow starts a fallen uh, because it is uh, December 5th, so we're exactly 16 days away from the first official day of winter, according to calendars. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But sad news today, um, actually not today, but last Saturday, uh, the flu has taken one of our own here in Missoula. Kindergarten at Russell Elementary died from influenza and pneumonia on Saturday, the first recorded death of this flu season. Across the U.S., the Center for Disease Disease Control and Prevention reported that there have been five flu-related uh, pediatric deaths so far in this season. In Montana, the last child to die from the flu was last winter. Um, the Missoula County ha City uh, County Health Department, in conjunction with the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services, encourages folks to be up to date on the flu shot and to avoid exposure to others. Also, here's some useful tips. Covering your nose and mouth with a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Washing your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer if soap and water are not available. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Avoid close contact with sick people. Staying home for at least 24 hours after your fever is gone on except to uh, medical care or necessities. So if your fuel gets worse, you have to go to the hospital. So, okay, that's kind of what's happening here in Missoula. But in the state, at least 34 open superintendent positions, um, and that's basically 71% of the positions were a hard-to-hire situation. That's ab above the rate of subject areas like art, music, and special education that are considered difficult to hire for as well. Though they are typically more... Um, vacancies in the positions than for superintendents. Although Montana, especially Missoula, has fortunate has been fortunate in the past, it seems that even Missoula may have issues replacing Missoula County a public superintendent Mark Thane. In small schools, administrative positions are not full time, so a lot of superintendents are also the principal and also teachers. And it's not uncommon for a superintendent, according to the uh, report from school administrators of Montana, 106 of the states 202 superintendents are full-time, and the other half are part-time with, uh, you know, they do part-time administration work, but then also they uh, make up for it by teaching and uh, being a principal as well. Special education is on the top of the list for demand in the state of Montana, but have some trouble finding the right folks to fill the demand. Uh, but the shortage hasn't changed since the since last year's 2017 report, and you expect the 2018 report uh, soon with more information about this. Um, in national news, Senate leaders declared Tuesday that they were convinced that Saudi Arabia Crown Prince was behind the killing of journalist Jamal uh, Khashoggi. Uh, Khashoggi went to Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Istanbul October 2nd, where he was killed. He was uh, allegedly lured by uh, folks to go down there. Um, and Saudi uh, Prince, there's been uh, many alleged uh, um, ideas thrown around here, and a lot of people have heard, heard them off comment as well. Of course, the CIA has not commented publicly on this assessment of the killing and have spoken with senators in close sessions, but many details have already leaked. Those familiar with the CIA report said that the agent believes that the Crown Prince was probably linked to the killing of this reporter. President Trump and a number of lawmakers say that the U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia is critically important and should not be completely ruptured over uh, Khashoggi's death, but there is no smoking gun, according to officials, and even quoted from Trump himself. All right, so those are some of the news items that are happening. Um, here is a bunch of new programs will be airing on MCAT, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about City Council, where they're going to be talking about the new Y at WCA, uh, and I believe they're going to be talking about the uh, 
6th and 5th Street by changing them into a single lane, two-way street. So that was a big topic on Monday, and I'll talk a little bit more about this after this. Hi everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to this edition of Out and About. We're here with Jesse Herbert Many at UM Spectrum Science Discovery Center. Hi. Jesse, thanks so much for hosting us today. Of course, thank you so much for coming. You know it. So, heck, where are we? Uh, we are uh, here at our museum at 812 Tool Avenue. We're a hands-on science center, and we're going to get to explore science exhibits and activities today. Excellent. Oh, Mr. Sniffles, I'm so sorry. Oh, it feels horrible. <laughs> I accidentally touched Mr. Sniffles. Uh, oh, okay, and then goodness. you wipe in here. And guess what happened? After about a month, our trade staffs started talking to each other. Then our health staffs started talking to each other. And then our, our um, the tax staffs start talking to each other. Our committee of jurisdiction over trade, tax, and health care, and so on and so forth. If you were a fly on the wall after about six months of this, we did this for 10, 12 years. Only missed maybe 20. No, left fewer than that. Maybe 10 times. You would think that we were one office. We were all working together, trying to solve problems get legislation passed. No acrimony, no bitterness, not adversarial. It was a teamwork. You were married before you married me. Why didn't you have to prove some kind of moral purity? Men do not have to follow those rules, Louisa. It is the way it is. Education of our daughter may change that. The way it is may change. Please consider that she is different. She can bring about a new way of thinking. My dear, look at you, and you smell like a horse. <laughs> I hope you didn't pass your father in the hall dressed like that. He's beside himself with me already. Come sit with me. Oh, heavens, don't bounce me. Oh, sorry, Mother. I need you to listen to me, Ella. Is this about boys? No, <laughs> this is not about silly boys. Except to say, stay away from them until you are out of college and at least 25. <laughs> Except we have a lot of artists that come here, but in the area where I live, which is the Phoenix Scottsdale area, we are working with Mesa Theater for the Arts to do a situation where several of the shows, we do three festivals a year, are free. Anybody can come. We've worked real hard to underwrite the grants to give people the opportunity to meet, to see and work and have workshops with diverse music. We tie in with MIM, Music Instrument Museum, which we work very closely with. Uh, just finished adopting a program where for every show that isn't quite sold out, 20 tickets go to uh, school age kids from 12 through 18 that wouldn't have the opportunity to see any of those diverse artists. So it's been really fun for that. One of my lifelong um, bummers is how the record companies have treated the, the, the whole idea of music and that in their, in their hands they had the best drug ever conceived in the world and that's the song and, and the presentation of that and what that does and how that affects people. And the record companies in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, they were greedy. They tried to get top dollar $16.99, $15.99. They priced music fans out of the business. And my philosophy was, let's, let's sell them all for $8.99 or $9.99. My sales would be triple what they are now. There's not a person that came into my shop that bought one or two CDs that wouldn't have bought three, four, and five if the pricing was right.
Hey guys, now it's time for your city council report. But before I get into your city council report, I want to give a little bit of props to the city of Missoula for uh, having a brand new website. So if you get a chance to see the new official website for the city of Missoula, it's the same address, ci.missoula.mt.us. It's very interactive, very pretty, uh, very, uh, I don't know why I said I was going to say beautiful, but then I said pretty. So anyways, uh, pretty. And, you know, payments, meetings, jobs, parks and recreation, all these cool little tabs that hop up when you scroll over it. But also, you know, government is still pretty much straightforward when, you finds to, uh, when it comes to finding your uh, meetings that I'm going to be talking about today. All right, so let's kick things off. Development Services recommends increasing the administration fee associated with snow and ice removal violations to be standard and consistent with hazardous vegetation violence, violation fees. So if your sidewalks, your city public sidewalks are blocking or a hazardous to other people, you could uh, occur fines of an increase, and they're going to increase the fines by $107. The, the change in fee structure for snow removal will help in acting as a, de a deterrent for snow and ice removal violations on sidewalks within the city limits. Jordan Hess talks about the rising costs of these tickets, and this is what he had to say. Um, I do want to highlight that this is a very good um, concept, um, and I think by the time of the public hearing, all of these details will be hammered out. Um, I want to remind people that this is not about grandma and grandpa not able to shovel their walks. This is about repeat offenders who are typically out-of-state absentee landowners um, who have um, rentals or other, um, you know, other um, property uses um, that are not abiding by a community contract that we have, which is that we are good neighbors and we shovel our walks and we take care of each other. And so for this to be construed as being about um, people who have no ability to shovel um, is completely false. Um, the, while we have Regulations. The people who enforce those regulations are humans that are compassionate, and um, any um, assertion to the contrary is um, is inaccurate. All right. So, just so you guys know, is that this isn't a uh, policed effort. Um, most of the uh, violations are complaint driven. So, if you have that neighbor that doesn't like you, and you've gotten tickets, um, it's probably that neighbor who's been uh, calling the cops on you in terms of not clearing out your uh, sidewalk. So, uh, move, uh, more on this, uh, Gwen Jones talks about uh, people who have disabilities or the elderly who are unable to physically um, remove the snow from their sidewalks. Elderly, we've never assessed a fee on an elderly um, citizen. And in talking to development services today, we've usually referred them or we've actually gone out and shoveled their walks for them for free. Um, the The difference in procedure this time around in the RFP is to actually have someone go ahead and shovel the walks immediately, assess a bill if it's something that we have decided it, it is repeatedly not getting cleared, and that's for the safety factor. That's to make sure people can walk up and down the, the sidewalks um, immediately and not waiting 24 hours or 48 hours to go back out and have a city employee do it. And a lot of the change was to actually help our elderly neighbors and folks who are disabled. So. Yeah, thanks for that. All right. Yep. So that was just a little bit of more information about that. Of course, the city, they talk about how uh, people can get more information about this. But, of course, this is a... Um, an action item for a public hearing, and the public hearing is set for December 17th, um, which will be happening on a Monday during city council at 7. So this is a complaint-driven process and get city officials to write tickets to your neighbors. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward in terms of that, but uh, if you are a, um, a person who is unable to uh, do, your, uh, you know, like clear out your own snow, you're disabled, or you uh, you can go to imaginemissoula.org. They're helping people help each other. They're a nonprofit here in Missoula, um, and they've um, been referred to by the city of Missoula, and they talk about this a little bit during the city council meeting. Uh, again, that Email address is imaginemissoula.org, and it is a just a resource for people who uh, need requesting help. So if you need help with this or that, maybe um, not only is it like a snow removal type deal, but maybe it's a, uh, a simple um, just trying to clear out some of the leaves that are on your sidewalks and whatnot. So that's uh, an example of how uh, a community nonprofit is helping people in the Missoula community with like shoveling off some of the snow. So if you have somebody who, if you know somebody who's disabled or who is elderly, imagine Missoula is org is a good re resource for it if you can't do it yourself. So, so you have a grandparent who lives in Missoula, but you live all the way like in California. 
example. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, again, the uh, meeting, uh, this, w this wasn't an action item. They didn't increase the fees, and the public hearing is set for December 17th, um, which I think is the last uh, city council meeting of the year. All right, so anyways, YWCA is opening a new space and looking to get support from the city of Missoula, which they got just last night. And needless to say, the city supported this, and the public comments were all in favor of this new conditional living request. So the conditional re uh, living request is all about uh, being like, hey, uh, we're opening this facility here, but we also don't have permission to have group families here to live here during uh, the trying times of emergency housing, domestic violence shelters, and all this and whatnot. And our facility already located off of Tool um, is already too small. They do not have space for it. And they want to have extra additive deals where they can have many organizations kind of come together under one roof to help people in the process of finding a home and also... Uh, uh, working with crime victim advocates and many different uh, solutions to coming, uh, dealing with domestic violence as well. So there's a lot of different things the YWCA is going to do, and they want to, th they, of course, they got overall improvement, and the city just, um, as Jesse Ramos quoted, just wanted to get out of the way so that YWCA can keep doing what they're doing. All right, so Riverfront Neighborhood, um, what you guys have been waiting for is 5th and 6th Street, uh, and sixth Streets uh, have raised safety concerns in the last year. And of course, 2015 City Council allocated funding to study potential re ramifications, uh, re uh, reconfigurations, my bad, about the two, about a two-way conversion. So the whole idea is that there's two one-way streets. The whole idea is they're going to basically convert those into one-ways. You don't lose a way, you, you, it just moves. It just like switches. It's like one way and the other one way switches places and they become two ways. You're not losing a lane of traffic. So anyways, that's kind of what, uh, what they were talking about. Study includes a quantitative analysis, public outreach, an office of neighborhoods questionnaire, and a UM survey. Results were shared and with adjacent neighborhoods last winter. A recommendation was forwarded to Mon D Montana Department of Transportation for review. Uh, this summer, Montana Department of Transportation, Trans uh, MDT, responded saying they would allow the preferred alternative to move forward. So basically, this is a whole idea of uh, repainting the lines. That, it's as simple as that. And of course, signage and everything like that. Um, Jordan Hess, he talks about the double threat that is on 5th and 6th uh, Street. And yes, he, uses, uh, he did use the word double threat. Um, this corridor, like I said, does, does have a documented crash rate. We have about one crash uh, per every 10 days. And national figures um, show that uh, lane reduction projects reduce crash rates from 19 to 37 percent. This roadway operates at just 25, per, both of these roadways operate at just 25 percent of their capacity. Um, so by removing a lane, um, you'll have uh, virtually no impact in the flow of vehicles, as evidenced by the, by the modeling in the report. Um, also, uh, as we see in the report, uh, if the State Department of Transportation accepts uh, some proposed signal timing modifications, uh, that coupled with increased turn lanes at a number of the streets uh, will actually improve intersection uh, uh, flow uh, and, and function uh, for east-west traffic. All right, so that was Jordan Hess on City Council talking a little bit about that and a little overview of what he's going on about. Of course, if you haven't ever driven down those one ways of 5th and 6th Street, it can kind of be interesting because a lot of times, let's say you're driving down the street, uh, you stop for somebody to pass, but then you're also blocking the blind, so, uh, blind um, spot of where the car is coming up alongside you. So it's two two cars are going down the same lane. A person's walking down here. They're being blocked by another person. And a lot of times they don't see it. So it's like you have to uh, wait for the uh, kindness of a secondary driver on that to uh, that two way as well. So uh, here's some public comment. Um, Carol Bella talks about living off these roads. She's a resident of these areas. And this is what she had to say. Uh, it is a real neighborhood. It's not just an arterial for people whizzing by. And in those 16 years, I've raised a young son from being four years old up to now he's at the university. Uh, and we had a it, it was nerve-wracking, you know. The, he was never allowed to open the street side car door uh, ever, and you, um, we did lose one beloved cat to Fifth Street traffic. Uh, so, but despite the fact that it is a busy street at times, actually most of the day, it's not very busy, but there are those commuter hours where it is busy. It's just so worthwhile. It's such a 
a wonderful neighborhood. I wouldn't trade my house, really. All right. So that was uh, Carol Bellum. And, um, of course, one of the other quotes was um, it, it would be even harder on congestion when it comes to uh, the release of a UM football game. A lot of people were going home on that road. So a lot of times congestion is another big issue that people have in terms of 6th and 5th Street, especially uh, from the University of Higgins. So here is uh, Clint Person, who with uh, the Chamber of Commerce, um, this is what he had to say in, uh, as a rep for the Missoula Chamber of Commerce. Missoula Area Chamber of Commerce remains opposed to the proposed removal of traffic lanes from 5th and 6th Streets. Transportation corridors are important for business. Maintaining current traffic volume capacity is uh, or should be a priority for continued economic development. As Missoula continues to grow, there will be increased pr pressure put on the transportation network, both from Missoula residents and from folks commuting into Missoula from outside the community. The expansion of Russell Street is an example of the growing demands being put on the Missoula Transportation Network. Uh, the ability to move goods across town and for the workforce to quickly and efficiently get to and from work depends on a strong and unhindered transportation network. The, the Chamber urges the Council to reconsider this proposal and look for solutions that do not remove lanes of traffic or risk increasing uh, congestion on 5th and 6th Streets as well as the neighboring arterials used for cross-town traffic. Thanks. All right. So. Uh, that was Clinton Persons. Um, moving on, we also have um, Gwen Hoppy. She is a teacher at Willard High School, which is just off of one of those uh, one ways. Um, not only the potential, you know, life-threatening situation, but just the feeling of safety and the feeling of um, being able to walk through this neighborhood, being a one of the chickens just trying to cross the road. Um, it's Here's, on one hand, you know, the, uh, the inconvenience, and then on the other hand is the, um, the safety and the, um, just the, feel, the good feeling there. And um, I don't know that, you know, for the, the economic, you know, standpoint, I don't know that the impact um, for that can, can outweigh just the, the daily safety of um, slowing down the traffic and um, not having that situation where you're standing there and somebody whizzes by you. So, All right, so that was Quinn Hoppy. Um, I have another quote, and this is from, um, uh, of course, you know, there, there is no guarantee that this would even work, but a lot of times the city uh, would rather... Uh, so the city is just thinking that it, like they have, they think that this would be a good solution. They did some studies, they did some surveys. Uh, a lot of people, especially in the neighborhoods, suggest that this would be a good idea, and also would slow down the traffic. And nothing uh, slows you down a little bit more when you see oncoming traffic. It's just uh, uh, you know, common rule of thumb is that when you see a, when you're driving down the lane and a car is coming r right in your kind of eye line direction towards you, but you know on the other side of this lane, it kind of already automatically makes you want to slow down because nothing's worse than. Uh, crashing into oncoming traffic. Anyways, so uh, in a way, uh, to be perfectly uh, honest, it is uh, the rule of alchemy because we're not losing a lane. We're, they're just trading lanes. And uh, according to uh, an article on the Missoulian that I just read uh, earlier this morning is that the the cost of this would be three to $4,000 overall because all they would have to do is re basically repaint the lines in the middle of the road and maybe remove a uh, do not enter one-way sign, that kind of deal. Other than that, it seems relatively cheap. And here is Gwen Jones with the uh, final comment of my city council report about this. Speed is definitely a factor, and ultimately safety is a factor. So that means something's not working very well, and we need to look at it. And frankly, it's an archaic traffic form in a highly residential neighborhood. So I um, am very glad that we've had the traffic study uh, thanks to prior city councilors who laid the base on all of this for Ward 3. And there's also been a huge amount of discussion of having more bike safety on 5th and 6th. That's all well and good, but to me it's an incredibly secondary issue to the double threat. And this is, as I said, a highly residential area with many people trying to cross 5th and 6th, and it's quite dangerous because we have a lovely culture in Missoula where a car will stop and the driver waves the person across, which is really, really nice. I think that's our western Montana culture, but it's not very safe, especially when the second car is coming and there's no visibility between the pedestrian or bicyclist trying to cross and the second lane. And I want to point out that these neighborhoods 
are in the Paxson School District, which is located over on Higgins and Evans. So many people are crossing these streets. Again, for Washington Middle School, huge district, children, families are crossing these streets, much higher percentages in the nice weather months because people finally want to get out and ride their bike and walk. So that's just a basic safety issue there. All right, so that was uh, Gwen Jones. Um, and a lot of times, if this doesn't work, they can easily change it back, and it's not too cost ineffective. But of course, two main issues happening within the community, and you can watch all those and more by logging on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is a good source for everything. Missoula, you can go to channel 190, and it brings you to the most recent city council meeting that is on there. But also, there's a land use and planning special meeting that happened just before the city council meeting that you should totally check out. It's pretty sweet. It was a special uh, um, meeting that they did around 5.30 on Monday. Um, you can check it out. It's from Dismet School. But of course, city council every Monday. Um, city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us for more information as well. All right. So, that's kind of what happened with your city council report. Um, I got uh, a dub and stuff for you guys. I have uh, this dub and stuff, and then next week I'll have your last dub and stuff for the year. And then, of course, I'm going to be taking a, a hiatus, a two-week break for the Christmas holiday season. But you'll get plenty of great content, which includes all the flagship videos. Um, you also get some all the dub and stuff from this past year. So there's going to be a lot of great stuff for you guys to enjoy while I'm gone. Um, but... For right now, here is the newest and latest dub and stuff. And it's from, um, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> something in Dreamland. Something in Dreamland. So yeah, I probably should know this. Dreams in Dreamland or coming to Dreamland. Or yeah, it's, it's from 1936. That's all I know. All right, so anyways, here is a cartoon that I redubbed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, uh, please, take all my scrap Whoa. wood. Check this oh, out. Will you, will oh, you come doing? on, come over here. Check What's this out. What's going on? <laughs> this is my jam. I like all these sweets. Holla. I'm going to lick come it on. all up, but I want to slurp, oh, slurp, 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 it. slurp it down. <laughs> hmm. Yes, I know exactly what those kids <laughs> would enjoy. <laughs> gotta get gotta this to wood take the home. wood home. Gotta get gotta this wood be, 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 be. home. <laughs> Here you go, children. Oh, oh, there's poor little children. What the heck's going on over here? I tried to give these kids some free ice cream. I say we track those children down. I'll go out here. Agreed. Gotta get this wood inside. We got wood. Get it, double entendre. Double entendre. I saw you. <laughs> Yo, Mom, give me some lovin'. <laughs> what about me, you shining stuff? <laughs> Yo, Mama, what's for dinner? Well, you guys get to enjoy some really... Uh, uh, well, come on. Come on. Uh, here's some really hard bread. <laughs> you know I can't wait to go up to be like this bread. <laughs> what about you, sis? Well, uh, well uh, maybe there's a better solution for this. <laughs> Yo, bro, you he, he gotta try this softened bread in the water. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Yum, yum, yum. Could have done my throat. <laughs> Don't want those starving kids to starve. <laughs> mm, very delicious. Oh, Can I have some more, Mama? Oh, uh, look what you did. Okay, whatever. I'll be fine, Mama. I don't need some more of that food. I like the bread as much as I can, what? but I don't really need it. You're the best cook ever, Mama. Uh oh, I love you guys so much. Maybe your father Popeye will come back. <laughs> well, you better hurry to bed because our dreams are a lot better than reality. <laughs> That's right, sis. <laughs> reality can kind of suck sometimes. <laughs> well, at least we got each other. You know, I kind of had an idea. I was thinking that maybe you and me would be all like, you know, whoa, 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 what's up, dog? We're going to be like, be the best beatbox duo ever. <laughs> gonna be the best in the world. Gonna, gonna, gonna be the best in the world and get all the suckers out of our way. You really know how to lay some of that sick rhymage down, but listen to this. Yo, girl, I'm gonna be the one. I'm gonna be the only girl that you ever want. Hey! <laughs> Sweet dreams, baby bro. <laughs> We're gonna be famous. I know it. And, and there's, there's nobody, nobody, not nobody, nobody who's, who's going to tell us otherwise. <laughs> oh, jeez. They're sounding like YouTubers every single day. Oh, what am I going to do?
somewhere in Dreamland from 1936. Public do domain cartoon. Uh, Christmas themed, of course, at the very end where these kids uh, have a nice little turnaround where they get everything they wanted for Christmas and more, but most importantly, family. All right. Anyways, let's talk about some uh, things that are happening um, in terms of things that you can do, things that are going to happen in the city of Missoula. It's time for your Missoula events. So Missoula events, um, Art from the Heart, Opportunity Resource, is doing a thing happening from today all the way all, all the way until December 21st, and it's out Opportunity Resources. Um, it, Op they open at 8 a.m., but it pretty much is going to go until uh, the afternoon. But this is a perfect gift away to Opportunity Resources. Resources Art from the Heart Sale. The award-winning artists of Opportunity are hosting their annual holiday art sale in the lobby of Opportunity Resources, which is 2821 South Russell, directly across from the YMCA. For more information, you can call them at 721-2930. But otherwise, just drop in Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Food for Fines, Missoula Public Library, is doing a Food for Fines all the way until December 8th. They already kicked it off this week. But once again, Missoula Public Library partners with the Missoula Food Bank and Community Center for Food for Fines. Uh, patrons may bring non-perishable food items to have your overdue fines forgiven. Um, Tiny Tales and Storytime is not at the Missoula Public Library, but it's sponsored by it. Tiny Tales is hosted at Empower Place at Missoula Food Bank. Hmm? And then, of course, Storytime is going to be at the Frenchtown Library at the Frenchtown Branch. Uh, Hands-on Science, Science Careers. So you're going to learn about science careers and seeing if you bring your kids who are nice and young, who are interested in science and learning some hands-on exhibits, uh, they can learn about their, their careers in science and how much it takes. Uh, areas is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits. Uh, what's it like to be a scientist? Find out the Discovery Bench today as they learn everything from a geologist does to uh, physicists, doctors, paleontologists, and more. And the makerspace activity is Strawbees. Charitable giving after tax reform. The public house, if you are confused by the effect of recent tax reform on charitable giving, you're in good company. The passage of Tax Cuts, tax cuts and Job Acts, TCJA, in the late 2017 brought a host of changes that will impact charitable giving in nonprofits. And you get to learn more about this and more. But of course, taxes, hey, any kind of giving really helps your taxes. So if you give to any charities, make sure you get an invoice of any kind. So when you do do your taxes, you can get some um, relief from it as well. Because the more you give, the less you have to pay taxes. But you still have to pay taxes because uh, it's, it's taxes. You're contributing to the Commonwealth. Um, Scrabble and Bridge uh, is at 1230 p.m. today at the Missoula Senior Center. Uh, enjoy some lunch and then completely destroy people with wordplay and a little bit of card action. Um, all at the Missoula Senior Center, the best dance floor in Missoula. <laughs> middle School Writers Group. Hey, if you're a, you have a kid in the middle school who's maybe struggling with writing or who wants to cultivate their writing skills, every Wednesday from 5:30 to uh, from 3:30 to 5 p.m. right after school, kids grades six through nine can get give and get good feedback, play with words, and eat a little chocolate. Kids Hour of Code event. Endeavor is hosting a uh, coding deal. It's an hour of code. Um, it's from 4.45 to 5 p.m. Um, wait, wait. Oh, that, that's the robot demonstration. That's part of it. Program with a scratch. Program with a scratch. Uh, robotics with uh, Logo Widos. Make something in Makerspace. Unplug program activities. And this is going to be at Endeavor starting at 4.30. So this is an hour long of code. Uh, but also you get an example of what the code does. Uh, missing and Murdered Indigenous Women Discussion. Payne Family Native American Center. It's at the Native American Center off the university. Uh, go to the Oval. It's that new building. Montana Conservation Voters have partnered with the Missoula Urban Indian Health Center and UM Indigenous Filmmakers Club to host a night of conversation and action concerning the ongoing epidemic of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. This is in room 105 in the Payne Family Native American Center on campus. Socrates Cafe, Missoula Public Library. Uh, it's an annual discussion of informal yet in intellectual and lively discussion of topics relating to the core areas of philosophy. Participants choose a broad question to explore each meaning and um, spend time turning it inside out. Why is the question you might have to ask. And occasionally, wrong way, wrong way around. No previous philosophy training required. Just bring your nagging doubts or idle thoughts. And it happens in the boardroom from 6 to 8 p.m. And also, if you're not interested in learning, doing that kind of thing at all with arguing people, hey, why don't you just make something in the 3D printed shop? So 3D Printing 101. 
Come learn about how they use the Mizzou Public Library's 3D printer during the workshop. Topics covered include how to set up prints, where to find 3D objects online, and print resources available for 3D modeling and 3D scanning. Treatment of uh, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Miz Missoula Public Library is hosting Thomas C. Hamburgen, PhD, and they talk about OCD. And one thing about OCD is that it doesn't mean you're a clean freak. It means that you have rituals that you can't break. And a lot of times, I think of it as a don't step on a crack or you break your mother's back, but they never step on any crack ever. That's one example. It's Each OCD is different. Some, see, some people have to hit their uh, unlock key or their lock key on their door 10 times exactly, otherwise they have to start all over again. Obsessive compulsive disorder. All right, so here are some of the events that are happening late night. There is a book signing happening at um, Shakespeare and Company about Legends of Yellowstone. If you heard of that book, you can go have a signing with uh, Ednor Thuralt, and there's gonna be a book signing start at 7 p.m. Men's acapella four part harmony singing is going to be at River Valley Church tonight at seven. They got jazz at the Top Hat Lounge starting at seven. Lewis and Clark Neighborhood Leadership Team meeting at seven. They got treatment. Uh, they have uh, sorry. Uh, they got trivia happening at Broadway Barn Grill. Uh, they have it at the Silver Slipper. All 7.30. Trivial Review Suit is happening at 8.30 at the Press Box, and Karaoke is going to happen at the Badlander, and of course at the Dark Horse Bar. Alright, so I'm going to throw it over to an uh, art clip for you guys, and this is from the Gallery of the Visual Arts, and these uh, art clips that I have for you will be ending by the end of the week, so you only get this chance to check them out at the Gallery of the Visual Arts before they have their uh, finals gallery show happening for BFAs and those kind of finals. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about more events happening Thursday, Family Fun Time at the YMCA. It is a fun indoor activities for the family, $22 if you're non-member, but it's free for members. Uh, of course, uh, once again, I want to give a shout out to Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Roots Indoor Sports Centers, which are full gear this winter season as you are looking for your kids to be active where the weather might not be so good with nine degree temperatures in the lows and um, if they're looking for some outdoor sports and activities it's nice to pick and choose some of those indoor resources as an option as well and they do a bunch of things with uh, groups and uh, special lessons and parkour a lot of the things on parallel movement does a couple things with uh, bitter gymnastics and more all right, so anyways, uh, Missoula Lions Club Christmas tree sale. It's time for Christmas season and happening from December 1st through Saturday, December 15th. And this is from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily and it's at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Um, head over to those fairgrounds, uh, get your Christmas tree and support the Missoula Lions Club in their largest fundraiser of the year. They will keep selling until all the trees are gone or until December 15th. For, for more information, you can go to Missoulian, uh, missoulianclub.org. Oh, actually, sorry. It's MissoulaLionsClub.org. I don't know why I said Missoulian, but MissoulaLionsClub.org for more information. <laughs> yep. 
Comics Camp, w, uh, YAAP, Zootown Arts Community Center is hosting uh, students who will learn to develop their drawing skills and tell engaging stories filled with emotion, action, and humor. They will read and uh, analyze great comics and graphic novels and have opportunities to learn from professional local guest comic artists. Lego Club and Predator Feeding at 3.30 p.m. Um, Missoula Insectarium hosts a Predator Feeding every Thursday at 3.30 p.m. at Lego Club and Missoula Public Library at 3.30 p.m. Gallery Talk with Jason Clark is at the Montana Museum of Art and Culture. And you get to talk about his art. Jason Clark is an artist, um, presents Gallery Talk in conjunction with the exhibit Between Wisdom and Knowledge, Contemporary Native, Native American Art at the Mallory Gallery at the Par TV building. Families Facing Loss, Recreating Holiday Traditions, the Hope Center of Missoula for Families in Transition. The holidays often re represent one of the most difficult times of the year. Inevitably, we are surrounded by re reminders of the holiday season in public places, on TV, and on the radio. The lights, music, and evergreen may seem out of sync with the internal feelings and or trigger painful memories. The Hope Center is located at 2145 South Avenue, and it starts at 6.30 p.m. It is for families facing loss and recreating holiday traditions. <coughs> and part of the traditions... Um, for people this summer, uh, this winter, oof, man, I'm way off. Uh, this winter is uh, musicals. And to feel good this winter, Elf the Musical is a great musical to go check out. It's going to be playing this weekend and next weekend. And it's all 7.30 p.m. with matinees at 2 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. And if you want to laugh this season... Um, it's their first Thursday of the month tomorrow night, and at Union Club, they host a comedy night starting at 9.30 p.m. You can show up at 9 p.m., and you can uh, sign up for some open mic comedy night. Please come and try their grill, which is open daily from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., so they serve food there as well. All right, so anyways, here are some of your late night events happening on Thursday, which I'll wrap up. Let me see here. Karaoke at the Dark Horse, Party Volcano at the Badlander, and adult dodgeball at the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. And that will wrap up pretty much everything that you need to know about what's happening within the city of Missoula. And that pretty much does it for my morning show. But if you want more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made your write all that out with Wixsite in the middle. You can also go to mcat.org for more information. Every Wednesday, we host a orientation for everybody, anybody who wants to learn and get their foot in the game when it comes to broadcast. and all it is is at MCAT.org. If you want more information, <laughs> you can go. You can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. All this and more. But that's about it for me. Um, once again, I want to remind people that Winter Days is happening um, this winter as well. And for $99, for $99, your kid from age 9 to about 13 years of age can enjoy three days of our Winter Days camp happening from December 26th through the 28th, the day after Christmas. You got to go back to work. Where are your kids going to go? Why don't you check out MCAT? And you can follow the link at MCAT.org. All right, that's it. I'm done. Thank you. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a great day. It's December 5th. Enjoy it. It's the first week of December. Thank you, and uh, goodbye. <laughs> mm -hmm.